Hello, it is Friday, February 11th, 2022. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday puzzle today, so um, probably have a challenge in store for us and no theme, so I can can uh, finally stop obsessing over uh, what I'm missing, uh, at least theme-wise in the crossword, and instead only obsess about what I'm missing in terms of my uh, knowledge and memory. <laughs> Uh, this looks like a tricky grid too. This will be, this does look like, this does look tough. Anyway, uh, let's, oh, and, uh, do stick around to the end of the video if you'd like to see some comments from yesterday's, uh, puzzle. I made one particularly persistent and irritating sort of lapse in vocabulary memory. So, uh, that wasn't, uh, wasn't great. Anyway, today's edition of the Daily Solve is brought to you by Josh Lucas, David Innes, and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster. So thank you, Josh, David, Hood Monster, uh, for your incredibly uh, gracious contributions to keeping this channel sustainable. They're all benefactors of the Daily Solve uh, Patreon campaign. And if you'd like to contribute to the Patreon campaign and help directly support this channel, you can do so at patreon.com slash daily solve. And there's a link in the description field underneath the video. There you can get access to all of the uh, bonus solves I've put up to date as well as if you do contribute at that benefactor level, uh, you can get that recognition as well as the Let's Check the Crosses mug. And at any level, regardless uh, of that, you can also get access to the extra channel on the Daily Solve Discord chat server. I've noticed there are quite a few, there have been quite a few new community created crosswords going up in the Constructor's Corner channel in the Discord. So if you're interested in solving some uh, puzzles with a very different, I would say very different tone than the New York Times crossword, which is quite enjoyable, go check those out. And I will be, of course, once there are a sufficient quantity of them, I will be doing my own playthrough of several for the Patreon channel. I look forward to the next one of those, whenever that is. All right, but first, let's solve today's puzzle, the Friday puzzle. This is quite an airy grid, so we should get solving soon because we have we have many cells to fill. This is a Friday crossword constructed by Trenton Charlson. And Trenton has constructed, I think, several dozen puzzles for the New York Times before, so pretty experienced constructor, and edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's get going. I need all the time <laughs> I have, probably. Words to a skeptic. I don't know. It could be something like trust me or believe me, or it could have something to do around proving. I, I probably shouldn't try and tackle these long ones right off the bat. Notable founding of 1701. 1701. 1707 was the Union... of Scotland and England and Wales. Don't think that's related. Uh, let's see. Impediments to teamwork. Tolkien creatures. Well, it could be orcs or ents. Those are both pretty common, but it probably ends in S. Squad leader. It could be the letter S. Uh, we, we have this question mark indicating a pun or wordplay. So it could be the first letter in squad. Um, impediments to teamwork. Notable founding of 1701. Yale, maybe? Yale University? I'm, I'm guessing with... Actually, that's pretty plausible because words to a skeptic could start with you. Um, subject of the so-called surgeon's photograph of 1934. Oh boy, I don't know. This is, this is going to be a tricky puzzle, it seems. Oh, maybe this isn't you. Tolkien creatures. Are there Tolkien creatures starting with a U? I mean... It's entirely possible there are. Uh, maybe this is all wrong. Um, let's keep looking at some of these shorter clues, shorter answers. Yuck. I don't know. Could be ug, but could could also not be. Gradually slowing in music. Um, retardando? No, that's too long. Why do I not remember what this is? Sorry, I'm sure it's very obvious to uh, those of you with musical knowledge, which I should have, but apparently don't at the moment. Inventory, uh, lover of Italian opera, lover of Italian opera. 
So it could be a character from an Italian opera who is a lover. It could be Tosca, Cinemax competitor. Does that work, this Tosca? Terra's Greek counterpart. Terra's Greek counterpart. Is that is that Gaia, maybe? I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm just going to keep bouncing around trying to... What was that? Why did the puzzle sort of move? Oh, it's because the clue is too long. Okay, gradually slowing in music. It probably ends with Ondo. <laughs> I know that's sort of silly, but I, I suspect that's the case. Probably starts with an L, Lent, for Lent, slow, Lento, or is that right? I don't know. Probably ends with O anyway. I bet it starts with L. <laughs> um, what friendly opponents may do? Words to a skeptic. I mean, if this was Yule, Tolkien creatures. Yuck, uh, probably not. I am struggling here. Field stats probably ends with an S. Food named for world capital, but pronounced differently. Oh, interesting. 1962 pop hit with a rhyming title. A rhyming title. 1962 pop hit, I don't know. Thumb on Some unauthorized drawings. Well, could be drawings as in illustrations. It could be drawings as, I wonder if it could be sort of illegal gambling or something, unauthorized drawings, drawing random, I don't know. Justice Department, big wigs, DAs, district attorneys, or attorneys general. District attorneys would be of a, of a, of a, um, a you know, a, a, a city, I guess. Uh, attorneys general for the country. Justice Department, okay. New York City's first subway line. Is it the IRT? I don't know. Or the BMT? Buttonless garment. Could be a T, a T-shirt. Singer with a 2018 Grammy for best R&B album. I don't know. Words to a skeptic. What friendly opponents may do. Agree to disagree. There we go. Oh, okay. what a relief to get one of these. And it does confirm, well, it doesn't confirm, but it suggests... Tosca, AGs, and T may well be correct. So what is this? Field stats. It could be TDs for touchdowns, maybe. Cinemax competitor. What is this? Cinemax competitor. So Cinemax is a, it's a paid television channel in the United States that shows movies. Oh, AMC, maybe? American Movie Classics? Or no, TMC, Turner Movie Classics. AMC, is that what... I don't know what AMC stands for, although this doesn't look very good. Maybe it's TMC, Turner Movie Classics. That probably is more of a direct competitor because it's film-oriented. Film Lent. Oh, Largo is what I was thinking of. Lent is also slow, though. I can't remember example what. Lentondo, Lentonzo. Inventory. I, itemize. Yeah, this would be Gaia spelled. I forgot to actually interrogate Gaia and see if it was, uh, see if I could prove, confirm or deny it with crosses. But to inventory, you, you could take an inventory. You could, you could inventory. You could itemize. I wonder if that's what this means. Can you use that as a, a verb? I'm fairly certain you can. Pioneering automaker, uh, Benz. Carl Benz, I think. Obviously, of Mercedes Benz fame, Daimler Benz. Blank Richter, contemporary artist whose painting Abstractus Build sold at auction for a record-setting $46.3 million. Gerhardt? Oops. Is that right? Let's check the crosses. Collectible print in brief. Yeah, that looks right. A litho, a lithograph. So the in brief means we're shortening the word lithograph to litho. Uh, bailiwick area. Sometimes it feels as though my bailiwick is crossword solving, but today it doesn't. <laughs> um, hasty getaways. Lambs, you're on the lamb. You're uh, making a hasty getaway. Circumference. Well, the circumference of a circle is the per sort of the perimeter of the circle. What is a, what is a word for that? 
And I kind of want it to start with C, but I'm not really sure it does. I know it doesn't. <laughs> On guard. Ah, so this is girth. I see. Yes, that, that's, that's fair enough. Okay, another word for the circumference of something basically round. Flat-bottomed riverboat. A bateau, I believe. Oh, this doesn't look very good, though, does it? Oh, no, it does. High point of the Old Testament, for short. I thought this MT looked looked bad, but Mount Ararat would be the uh, the answer, where, which, what, continued to poke up above the, the Great Flood, I believe. How horrible. Uh, shut ups? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> shut, uh, shut it? How horrible. Shut your eyes? Uh, what do I not see here? I clearly don't see something. Carol opener. So this is probably a Christmas carol. Um, opening words. I can't think of, uh, memory is just shot today, seemingly. Just try to be calm. And here we have become harder to bear. And here we have flash. Is there anything I can do up now that I have more crosses here? Words to a skeptic. Oh, have a little faith. Little faith. The have a little doesn't fit, but. Show. Oh, oh, ye of little faith. Ye of little faith. Oh, oh. All right, so this says this is in fact Yale. Wow, that's actually <laughs> that's so funny. And I and I discounted it because I assumed that if it started with U, it would be oh sorry, if it started with Y, I assumed it would be Y O U, which I think was not an unreasonable assumption, but I did not take into account ye. Oh ye of little faith. Words to a skeptic. Could have said that to myself about not believing this was Yale. Oh ye of little faith. There are other words that start with with why. Impediments to teamwork could be egos. So I suppose Yale was founded in, in 1701. And Tolkien's creatures are orcs, not ants in this case. Oh, the subject of the so-called Surgeon's photograph of 1934, the Loch Ness monster. I now that I now that this is filled, I actually remember that. The surgeon's photograph. I do actually remember that phrase, but I didn't at all um, until I, my memory was prodded by actually knowing what it referred to. Okay, food named for a world capital, but pronounced differently. Oh, lima beans, of course, I suppose named after Lima, which is not pronounced Lima. That's interesting. I never thought to make that connection, I suppose, because they're pronounced differently. That's so interesting, Lima, Peru. Okay. Oh, 1962 pop hit with a rhyming title, Eso uh, Beso, right? Eso Beso. Uh, Judicial's ratings group, um, the American Bar Association, probably, I would think, judicial. Some, oh, I see, some unauthorized drawings is more straightforward than I was trying to make it. It's simply fan art. Um, fan art, that's that's straightforward. I was trying to imagine a cleverer, misdirected version of this clue, I suppose. Maybe that would have needed a question mark, but not necessarily, especially not on a Friday or Saturday. Um, British territory in the Atlantic, uh, Bermuda, and offshore could be a sea. We always use those words in precisely the same way, but I suppose they do work. Muscles strengthened by push-ups and formally delts, I suppose. And muse for Galileo. Is it Uranus? Is that was that Galileo's muse? Handmade sign. Handmade signs. So the question mark makes me think that as this is some kind of pun or wordplay, I'm guessing there is maybe something to do with sign language or some kind of hand symbol. Oh, gestures. Sorry. <laughs> Once again, shouldn't make this more more complicated than it needs to be. A handmade. It, and I was trying to think of specific examples of the thing in question, but generally speaking, a gesture, a handmade sign, so to speak. The X Men, for example, they're mutants, right? So there we go. And an account is a tale. You will give an account of your journey, a tale of your journey. Language spoken along the Mekong, the Mekong River, would be Lao. And a flash could be a glint of sunlight or something like that. Morale booster. <laughs> the first thing that came to mind was gin, which is not maybe not the healthiest response. Morale booster. 
a win. Right. Once again, let's try to find let's try and find the straightforward answers. This puzzle is difficult enough without making it more complicated. All right, to become harder to bear. Um, could something could wear on you, maybe? But hold on, this looks like Santa, doesn't it? Certain list recipient, yes, Santa will um will receive a list of um toys that children want. Give oneself something to aim for. To set a goal? In the interest of keeping things simple, let's try the let's try the simplest explanation here. Uh philosopher Diderot. Why do I not remember Diderot's first name? Uh, Blues Hall of Famer James. Oh, it's because this is wrong. I wanted this to be Janus, but... Oh, no, no, what is this? Muse for Galileo. Is it Denis? Denis Diderot? Diderot? Urania? I'm blanking here. Word of regret, alas. Maybe I should just keep solving the crossword and hopefully something comes in to, to make this work out. If this is not Uranus, which it isn't, I wonder if it is Urania. Is that a female form? Yeah, we'll have to come back to this. Month for watching the uh, Perseid meteor shower. Well, this doesn't look right, does it? Oh, no, 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 it could be. Sorry, I was just thinking there weren't any months that fit here, but August does. Uh, what about this? Exclamation of exasperation. Uh, <laughs> that's what I should be exclaiming right now. Reynolds co-star in 1981's The Cannonball Run. I've actually never seen The Cannonball Run. That's the uh, film in which they race across the entirety of the United States, I think. Car race, uh, automobile race, but I don't... Uh, who would this be? Probably be more obvious when I see more clues, but I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think it's knowledge I have. I'll need, to just, I'll need to just infer it based on the crosses. Fade Away. That could be Die, I suppose, but that might be might be too general. Exclamation of disappointment. Well, like actually, that could be drat or dang or darn or damn. I mean, it could be anything. But those all start with D, but that's because I have confirmation bias here about thinking that it is a D already. Fade away. So if this word die, big name in frozen confections. Well, I mean, it could be icy, but I don't know. That you, that's a drink. I don't know that you'd call it a confection. I mean, Edie's maybe. Um, here we have some terminal info for short. Could be estimated times of arrivals or departures. Now, someone told me just a few weeks ago that one of these is overwhelmingly more common in the crossword than the other. And I don't remember which it was. I always think of them as, oh, it always could be either of them, but one of them is much more common. Rhetorical question lamenting a lack of respect. Well, it does seem like it would be harder to end this with A, so maybe it is estimated times of departure. Um... Well, although, if this were Edie's, this doesn't really look like anything at all. And implicatively, an, adju an adverb, I would kind of be surprised if it ended with a double S, but it, I mean, hmm. I'm going to delete that D, but I think the ETs are probably correct. A piece of barbecue, it could be a rib. I mean, barbecue is abbreviated, but barbecue is so frequently abbreviated that I don't think it necessarily means the answer needs to be as well. Gives an earful. Rants or something. Um, rhetorical question lamenting a lack of respect. Is it something I said or what am I chopped liver? Uh is I mean it might start with is actually that's plausible actually right it could all so this down 49 down is Amarillo to Dallas direction so the second cell in 54 across could only be N S uh, W or 
E. Boy, I'm really not, <laughs> old brain's not working today. Um, because it has to be a cardinal direction to construct this uh, compound card, this compound direction. So is in, I mean, it could be in something, uh, probably not IW, probably not IE. So this will be south or north. Which means, I guess it doesn't specifically mean anything. I mean, it means that, yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean anything for these other ones. But they have, they have the same restriction, obviously. Implicatively, I mean, if this were rib, I guess I don't know that it's rib. I really shouldn't assume that I know that. What else can we solve here? Carol opener. What is this? Become harder to bear. So if this if this were wear something, big, big 10, big Ben. What, what, is, what about big Ben? The bell in the, uh, in the clock tower at the Houses of Parliament. I mean, I think it's a common, it's commonly known that people commonly misstate that that tower at the Houses of Parliament here in London as Big Ben. In fact, it is the bell inside the tower that's Big Ben, but also it's sort of the meaning is changing over time as more and more people use Big Ben to refer to the tower. But what's funny about the tower is that there are um, sort of different names for it. I could be, I could be misremembering some of these, but there isn't necessarily a completely cut and dried, clear historical definite name for what that tower is. I think it's sometimes called St. Stephen's Tower, sometimes the Victoria Tower. I think sometimes the Elizabeth Tower. I might be, that one might be, I might be the least confident about that. But there, I, it's, it's, uh, has different names. And I, because I don't think there is one absolutely certain canonical historical name. So it doesn't really help the whole Big Ben <laughs> uh, misnomer thing because it's hard to know, well, I'm sure there are people who are more confident than I about what the correct name for that tower is, but uh, I think there's some degree of ambiguity and that has probably not helped the Big Ben um, confusion. Anyway, just if this were Big Ben, just try to be calm, brace yourself or be brave or just try to be calm. If it were a T, try to, no, try is in the, is in the clue, so we're not going to get that. I don't know. How horrible. Oh, shudder. Oh, I should have I should have considered that Gerhard would be spelled with a D, not a T. Well, that was a mistake. I shouldn't have been caught. I, I should have checked that immediately before I before I moved on. That was silly. I had a lot of um, speculation going on early in the solve up here. I guess Lentondo ended up being correct. Um, and I really I really should have double checked those more conscientiously. Okay, Carol Opener. Oh, is it Adeste Fidelis? Is that what this is? Um, down. I don't know. Just try to be calm. Exclamation of exasperation. This one is strange. And I suppose this could be give some, oh, I was going to say this could be give set an aim, but it won't be because give oneself something to aim for contains the word aim. So that's not going to be the case. What was this again? Oh, right. Reynolds co-star in 1981's. Oh, Dom DeLuise maybe? Um, oh, and then maybe this is Denis. Denis Diderot. That sounds right. And Urania, I suppose. I'll have to look, I'll have to look this up. Is that a female form of, of Uranus or is it something else? I'm not sure. Okay, let's see here. Fade away. Right, maybe that's die. Gives an earful. Rhetorical question, lamenting a lack of respect and implicatively. Oh, one time cable giant acquired by AT&T in 1999. MCI? Uh, MCI was a phone company, though. Cable giant. Don't know. MTV, maybe? I don't know. Um, 
HBO? I don't know. No. Those are all one time. So it would have to be something that doesn't really exist anymore, maybe. One time cable giant. Sorry, everyone, for the delay here. I'm trying to, um, I need to grab onto something that is useful. So why did I think this wasn't a death day? Why did I think that? Oh, I think it's because I couldn't think of something to for down here. Down. Oh, eat. To, to down a meal, to eat it. Okay, why did I... All right. As always, <laughs> consider all the possible senses of a word. I was thinking of down as in the direction. I was thinking of down as in the adjective to mean sad or feeling blue. I didn't think of down as the verb to eat. Oh, right. Become harder to bear, wear thin. This <laughs> You could say this crossword is really wearing thin. It's becoming harder to bear, but I shouldn't say that. I feel bad about saying that. It's a quite a good crossword. I'm just not performing brilliantly. Big. All right. So this could be Big Ten, Big Ben. It could probably be other things as well. Sorry, I'm just glancing at the keyboard to see if anything jumps out at me. Big Pen doesn't really seem like anything. I don't know. Big Men, I suppose. That doesn't look like it fits with the R. Oh, breathe. Big Ben. And just try to be calm. Breathe. All right. All right. We're getting somewhere. We are getting somewhere. Gives an earful. Reads the riot act. Yes, yes, yes. You might be reading me the riot act about some of the things that uh, you may have noticed that I have not yet uh, discerned. So a piece of barbecue, maybe it is a rib. Amarillo to Dallas direction. Okay, so it'll be east by something east. Uh, right, sorry. So this will be... Um, I don't know why I just blanked out there. This will be uh, north or south. Rhetorical question lamenting a lack of respect. I think those are the two that I thought it could have been already. So that's not necessarily helpful. But um, creature without ears that uses vibrations to hear. Oh, an ant, maybe? Oh, implicatively, between the lines. Yes. So what is being implied is what is inferred between the lines. Well, you infer something that is implied. It is, it is implied. It is implicative. Um, <laughs> you could, I could sort of imagine a, a, a crossword theme that combines reads the riot act in between the lines because between the lines, you know, the full phrase is reading between the lines. And you could imagine pairing that to create some kind of compound wacky reads the riot act between the lines. You could imagine that somehow being the sort of pun that would end up in a crossword theme in some way. Anyway, uh, it's an entirely half-baked thought I just had. Sorry about that. Tolkien creature could be an ent, the tree creatures, right? And, oh, an exclamation of exasperation is arg, what I, what I was internally exclaiming uh, frequently throughout this solve. Rhetorical question be lamenting a lack of respect. Things. Is nothing sacred? Ah, interesting. That's a that's a clever clue, and I think subtly misdirecting because rhetorical question lamenting a lack of respect. I think most people would initially read this. I certainly initially read this as lamenting a lack of respect for oneself. So you aren't respecting me, or this person isn't respecting me, and and that's what I was thinking with things like what am I chopped liver? That sort of that sort of rhetorical question. Um, but this is referring to something else being disrespected. Uh, usually not a person, but a, but a concept often is nothing sacred. So I had to go in a different direction with that. That's, that's a, a good and slightly ambiguous clue. It's clever. All right. So is there anything else we, we got here that didn't, we did not previously have? I don't think so. Oh, TCI, one time cable giant acquired by AT&T in 1999 TCI. I actually don't know what that is. So, um, good thing I got it with crosses. And an exclamation of disappointment. It looks like it is darn. So this is dye and this is icy. That's so interesting. Frozen confections, icy. I guess I wouldn't think of a frozen drink as a confection. I don't know why. I guess I think of a confection as something that, I don't know, I don't know why I think this, but I think of a confection as something that could be sold in a baker's counter. You know, something that, something that doesn't necessarily need to be 
refrigerated or frozen in order to maintain its integrity. Which, which leads to the question, is an ice cream cake a confection? And I suppose it is, but I don't like that it is. All right. Anyway, there's the, there's the puzzle. On that utterly pointless and baffling note, there's the Friday crossword. Um, wow, what what a crossword. What a grid. This is just, I mean, it's just extraordinary. Look how many full grid spanning a- answers. We have six of these things stacked. Ye of little faith, agree to disagree. Loch Ness Monster reads the riot act, is nothing sacred, and between the lines. I mean, that that is amazing. I wonder how many of these, if any, are debut placements in the New York Times crossword. That's that's interesting. I'm always interested to know. A pretty, t- I would say, a pretty tough puzzle. And we had some slightly obscure vocabulary. I had to chip away at gradually slowing in music to eventually, um, aided by some crosses, of course, land on Lentando. And what else did we have that I thought was a little difficult? Oh, this cross here, Urania and Denis uh, Diderot and Galileo's Muse Urania. And then we had another across yet another, <clears throat> excuse me, another proper noun with Etta James, Blues Hall of Famer James, Etta James, the great singer. And that in turn crossed another proper noun, proper a name in this case, Dom DeLuise, co-star of uh, the Cannonball Run in 1981, uh, Burt Reynolds co-star, I suppose. And yeah, a pretty difficult, a pretty difficult crossword, I would say. Let me know how you, how you fared with it. I thought it was difficult. Quite a few proper nouns. Gaia, Benz, Mount Ararat, Yale. That was interesting, that 1701 bit. Um, yeah, anyway. Oh, Santa, I suppose, is a proper noun in this context. Um, anyway, anyway, quite a few. So, oh, Bermuda. Let me, TMC, sorry, there are just so many. There are actually an enormous number of proper nouns in this puzzle. Or, or um, you know, acronyms, for abbreviations for proper nouns, TCI. Yeah. Anyway, uh, again, um, <laughs> I suppose even Loch Ness Monster is one. I'm, I don't know why I'm reading the entire crossword to you. That's not interesting. So I hope, I hope you enjoyed this crossword. Now I'm going to put up the spoiler wall here and we can discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. Which, um, which I also found tricky, but in a very different way. It wasn't so much the um, the cluing and the puzzle unto itself was tricky. It was a very uh, tricky. It was a tricky theme for me. And on on the note of that theme, uh, Spikle Thing or Spickle Thing points out, "I see there are no letter I's in the puzzle that are not dotted," which is similar to the previous cross the T's puzzle. That is great. I should have thought to check for that but I didn't. Yes. In, in last week's cross the T's puzzle, the only T's in the puzzle were the ones that we created, that we crossed. And apparently that was similar with the I's in yesterday's puzzle. The only I's were the ones we created by dotting them. That is, that is great. Um, what a, what a well-constructed pair of themes. I really enjoyed those. Is there anything else about the theme? I don't think so. So now I'm going to address the most embarrassing thing I can <laughs> remember, uh, in, I don't know any solves I've done for a while anyway, is that I completely, I don't know why, but I think out of some kind of overzealous attempt to be finding a theme somewhere, I completely forgot about the existence of the word destin, as in to destin, to destin for greatness. I was only somehow able to think of the noun destiny and the adjective destined, which of course is very much related to the verb to destin. And I kept pronouncing it destine. I don't really know what was going on in my brain. Sometimes doing these solves is just intensely um, embarrassing and exposing because my my ridiculous mental lapses are, are recorded and broadcast to the world. So uh, that's not great when that happens. But anyway, there were certainly plenty of people willing to uh, help me out and correct me here. Ben Ward says, "To destine means to intend or choose to a particular choose for a particular purpose or end." Yes, of course it does. <laughs> to destine something for some purpose. I don't. Anyway, thank you, Ben. Um, I don't know what I was thinking. Uh, anyway, Ben says, "Well done on the solve, though I don't understand why you were so reticent to both with both this and the cross your T's theme to believe it could be the case." Um, I don't know. I suppose 
Um, I don't really know. Yeah, I, I did yesterday. Really, really, almost resist um, starting to put rebuses into the grid. I, I don't really know why. Anyway, don't have an answer. Uh, let's see here. So, what else do we have on yesterday's puzzle? Uh, oh, Kathy Swope explains points uh, ranking elk. She says racks of mature typical American elk bull. Uh, bulls normally have six normal points on each antler, including the main beam tip that is counted as a normal point, but not individually measured. But they occasionally have seven or more normal points on each antler. The points are added all up along with some other criteria to score the elk. All right, so I did think it had something to do with the antlers. Um, and it, it turns out I, w I was partially right, and then there are other criteria to score the elk as well. So thank you, Kathy, for that uh, clarification. And... I think that was all I, I think that was all I pulled out from yesterday. So I'm sorry if I missed something um, important or something that uh, put me in my place in, with some other uh, utterly dreadful lapse in memory or knowledge. I cannot believe that destined thing. That is, is just embarrassing to the extreme. Anyway, thank you for joining me for today's puzzle. I hope you enjoyed it. It was a tough one. Um, let me know how you fared. Please do subscribe to the channel. Apparently, there have been a number of people who have found the crossword series through the Wordle videos. So, if you're one of those people, welcome. That's absolutely wonderful. I'm very pleased. Um, I, I, well, I didn't really have any goal in mind when I started doing the Wordle videos. It was just a. It actually it takes so long to um, render out these videos on my computer that I, I actually solve. I do the. I make. I record the Wordle videos while I'm waiting for the crossword video to finish. Uh, rendering so that I can upload it. So it doesn't actually add a huge amount of time um, to, to this work, which is which is nice. Uh, sometimes on a Monday or Tuesday, the um, the regular crossword actually renders quite quickly because the video is shorter, but uh, today it won't. <laughs> so anyway, I'll have plenty of time to solve the Wordle, which apparently is on the New York Times website now. So that's uh, this will be my first Wordle video. It, well, the first day in which both daily videos are actually hosted by the New York Times website. Well, not the videos, but the, the games on them. Anyway, um, thanks for, for making it to the end of this rambly video. I hope you enjoyed the solve. I um, hope you um, are enjoying this channel generally. Again, do subscribe if you are. And I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle, which may well be tougher than this one. Hopefully not too much more difficult because that uh, I found this to be pretty tricky. And that's that. I'll be back tomorrow. I hope you will be as well. Until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Uh -huh.